Currently, a severe outbreak is affecting young adults and teenagers primarily in the United States. According to the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, there have been roughly 2,300 cases of e-cigarette or vaping related acute lung injury this year. Moreover, over 47 deaths have been confirmed so far and the only state without a case is Alaska. Vaping of course refers to the usage of e-cigarettes, a practice which has been become increasingly popular in the last years. While the number of smokers currently decreased globally, the numbers of vapors increased from 7 million in 2011 to 41 million in 2018. And a few days ago, the story took another turn, when it was reported that a Canadian teenager allegedly developed popcorn lung-like symptoms through vaping. Of course, vaping is a political and quite controversial topic since the long-term effects are not known. And I want to emphasize that we are only interested in the scientific aspects of vaping as well as the possibility in developing disease in this video. So how can we explain the 2300 cases in the United States? And what kind of substances might be behind this? Are e-cigarettes really as harmful as some news articles suggest? My name is Kim Steinig and today we talk about vaping and lung diseases. After going through the latest news articles and relevant publications, I think that we should focus on three terms today. Popcorn lung, vitamin E, acetate, and diacetyl. In many articles about the Canadian teenager, popcorn lung symptoms are being mentioned. Although it sounds like a phenomenon which might occur when watching the dramatic scenes of the Joker with a large portion of popcorn, popcorn lung is an inflammatory disease which affects the lungs. This disease is widely occurred in microwave popcorn production plants, thereby giving it the name popcorn lung. In my story, it was found that workers had 2.6 times the expected rate of respiratory symptoms, such as chronic cough or shortness of breath. Moreover, they exhibited 3.3 times the expected rate of airway obstruction. In the world of medicine, we call popcorn lung bronchiolitis obliterans. From the term bronchiolitis, we can deduce that inflammation occurs within the small airways of the lungs of bronchioles. Obliterance means that these airways are blocked due to the underlying inflammation and fibrosis. Okay, so now we know the popcorn lung involves the inflammation of bronchioles. So what are the exact symptoms and causes? Affected people might experience dry cough, wheezing or shortness of breath. Symptoms also slowly progress over weeks or months and they are not episodic like for example asthma. There is currently no cure for bronchiolitis obliterans, but we can try to slow down the progression of the disease. Treatments include the usage of antibiotics, corticosteroids and immunosuppressive drugs in order to stop inflammation. In severe cases, lung transplantation might be recommended. Although the disease is comparatively rare, there are different causes of popcorn lung. It affects about 75% of people by 10 years who have received a lung transplant and over 10% of people who have received a bone marrow transplant. Moreover, bronchiolitis obliterans might also be caused by viral infections or the exposure to certain chemicals. The latter is now especially important to us since it is the reason for the current e-cigarette debate. Bronchiolitis obliterans can be caused by being exposed to certain chemicals. This now includes a chemical which has been associated with the aforementioned popcorn lung cases, diacetyl. Diacetyl is considered to be a safe ingredient in food, however, it can become dangerous once being inhaled. Although this danger has been known for quite a while, there is still research going on in this field. Besides directly harming the airways of lungs, scientists at the University of Harvard have further shown that diacetyl also changes the expression of genes in cilia. Cilia are antenna-like structures and the first line of defense in lungs. Changes in the activity of genes might now impair the function of cilia, thereby contributing towards the disease. Since the acetyl is also found in certain e-cigarette flavors, it is often debated that this might be the cause of the underlying diseases in vapors. This includes a teenager we've talked about in the beginning of this video to some degree. In this case, however, it is important to clarify that this teenager exhibits popcorn lung-like symptoms and not the disease itself. Moreover, I also want to emphasize that it is still debated how harmful diacetyl is in e-cigarettes. The levels of diacetyl and its substitutes are much lower in e-cigarettes compared to those in tobacco. I looked for different studies and it's actually quite difficult to estimate how much these levels differ, but broadly speaking, tobacco contains more diacetyl. 
Moreover, diacetyl as an ingredient from e-cigarettes is currently banned in many countries, including the UK. But now we come to another substance. In the last months, there has been more and more research focusing on another chemical, vitamin E acetate. Vitamin E acetate is a nutritional supplement which is not known to cause any harm when ingested. Similar to diacetyl, however, vitamin E acetate might also become harmful once inhaled. Vitamin E acetate is a frequently used diluent in THC cartridges. About a month ago, a report issued that THC-containing products from Utah residents who suffer from different lung diseases contain vitamin E acetate. Just some weeks ago, the New York State Department of Health also collected cannabis-containing products from different patients and found high levels of vitamin E acetate in all of the samples. Importantly, another study found that fluid samples from the lungs of patients suffering from e-cigarette or vaping-induced acute lung injury all exhibited vitamin E acetate. However, the FDA has not settled on vitamin E acetate and is looking for other different compounds which might provoke the observed diseases. These are some of the most important evidences for a possible link between vaping and the current lung injury outbreak in the United States. What I want to emphasize is that a lot of research has yet to be conducted in order to really assess how harmful vaping is. When in my research, I was actually quite shocked how many statements on the internet were just wrong interpretation of studies or did not cite studies at all. E-cigarettes are currently not associated with popcorn lung, but they seem to inflict some damage on consumers. Moreover, tobacco was often reported to be more dangerous than e-cigarettes, however, a lot of studies have yet to be conducted here. Nevertheless, the whole debate is a great example of how complicated research can be and how much we still need to know in order to draw conclusions. But what do you think about the arguments I formulated in this video? Do you agree or disagree or do you have any other relevant publications you want to share? If so, let me know in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this video and so also leave a like and subscribe if you're new here and hit the bell button in order to stay informed about the latest discovery in life sciences. And with that, I'll see ya.